Hello YouTube, today I'm going to talk about my camera history and how I first got an interest in photography. As you can imagine, when I was a child of around 6 years old, there was no such thing as the internet, mobile phones, and as for computers, you could usually only find one in a school or college, models like the BBC Micro. Later, home computers were starting to become more popular, with models appearing in homes like the Sinclair ZX81 and the Commodore VIC-20. It was at this time I was given my first point and shoot camera. It was a Kodak Brownie, as you can see in the picture, and took 110 cartridge film. It was first produced by Kodak in 1972 and was a smaller version of their earlier 126 film format. I remember taking this camera on many outings loaded with 24 exposure film and snapping away joyfully until I realised that my film would no longer wind on and I had no more shots left. I was always restricted to one film per trip. My next camera was a Kodak Instamatic and it had an optional flash unit called the Magic Cube. It was probably the most popular point and shoot camera at the time even though they were first produced in 1963, they were still being handed down from parent to child and they were a go-to camera for every school trip and family outing. After the 110-126 era, I had a succession of unexciting 35mm point and shoot cameras, but occasionally got to have a go with this, which was my dad's Praktika MTL3. This is not that exact one, but it is my favourite fully manual 35mm SLR. Practica MTL3 was made in East Germany between 1978 and 1984 by a company called Pentacon. It features the 42mm screw mount lens and it is built like an absolute tank. This camera shot from speeds from bulb up to 1,000th of a second. It also had a setting for a hot shoe flash that shot around 1 25th of a second. In 1992, at the age of 16, I joined the British Army and with my first paycheck I bought a 35mm Canon SureShot zoom camera. I chose this over the SLR because it was cheaper and had the advantage of a fixed 35 to 70mm zoom lens. This made it easy to operate in the field and it was lighter and took up less room in my Bergen or webbing than the SLR. This camera accompanied me on countless two-week tabbing exercises as well as operational tours in Northern Ireland and the war in the former Yugoslavia which is now known as Bosnia. While in basic training I was lucky enough to take photography as part of my education package. This is where I learned the bulk of my photography skills with an SLR. The basics of aperture, shutter speed and ISO, the relationship between them and how they affect the amount of light coming into the camera as well as depth of field. However, we weren't let loose on SLRs straight away. First we had to prove our framing and composition skills on the most basic of 35mm point and shoot cameras using black and white film like Ilford HP5 like I've got here. We set off around camp with our cameras snapping pictures of anything that stood still long enough. We then went back to the dark room where we were shown how to load film onto spools, use dev tanks, mix chemicals and develop our films. When we went back for the next lesson, the instructor had made prints from our negatives and we had a critique session where we were graded on our work. All those that achieved grade C or above were given an SLR and all those that failed to achieve the required standard were given another roll of film for their point and shoots and had to start again from the beginning with the popular army phrase, sorry lads, it pays to be a winner, ringing in their ears. In the early 2000s I bought my first digital camera. It was a 2 megapixel job which I can't remember the make of. I had a succession of fairly boring point and shoot digital cameras until 2007. Not long after I left the army I bought my first DSLR which was a 6.1 megapixel Nikon D40 shown here. I absolutely loved this camera and bought a load of accessories for it including a Tamron 55 to 200mm lens. Even though I loved the DSLR with the convenience of not having to get film developed and being able to look at images on the back of the screen I felt there was something missing. Prints. I realise now that almost everybody had a digital camera or smartphone and nobody was printing out their photos. Gone were the days of looking at family photo albums and family slideshows. All photos have been now being converted to zeros and ones and stored in the My Pictures folder on computers mostly never to be viewed again. Often this is due to files being corrupted on old media such as three and a half inch floppies CD-ROMs being scratched or lost 
and hard drives of computers that have found their way to landfill after developing faults that turning it off and on again just wouldn't fix. For me, one of the most exciting things about photography was the anticipation of receiving my photos from boots or super snaps, not knowing what they were going to be like. Were they exposed properly? How many shots would have blurred fingers in the corner? With prints you had something physical you could hold in your hand at the end. The thing about prints is, unless they're destroyed by fire, they last for decades. Here are some photos that I took when I was in the army. These were taken in 1993. They're in the same condition now as they, are, as they were when I got them back from the lab. There's something about the character and texture of an image taken using film that you just don't get with a digital camera. So much so that programs like Photoshop have tools to help you to recreate the classic shot on film look. Just like vinyl has made a comeback, film photography is making a comeback too. The price of old 35mm SLRs is steadily rising on eBay to the point that in a few years you won't be able to pick up one for less than £200. If you are thinking of getting back into film photography, or you are a young person wanting to try it for the first time, then the time to buy is now. In the next video we will have a look at my film cameras and we will talk a bit about them. Until then, thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.